All right. Oh. Hey there, folks. This is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Today, what we're going to talk about is buying a good used skid loader for your farm, your property, your business, or whatever you might be buying it for. We're going to be looking over this awesome Gale RT210 skid loader, and we're going to kind of go around and show you guys some pointers that can be good food for thought for you if you're deciding to buy a skid loader like this or even a wheeled skid loader. So come along as we learn a little bit together here on the Stony Ridge Farm about buying a good use skid loader for your property, your job site, or whatever you want it for. All right? All right, folks, welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm channel. If this is your first time here, please pound that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. This is a 150 acre first generation farm project here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. And we do a little bit of equipment stuff, a little bit of tractor stuff, and a little bit of everything when it comes to land and farm management and building a farm and building structures and all sorts of fun stuff. Got a new shop going in right here in about two months. So lots of fun stuff going on. So this is again the Gill RT210. This machine is a track machine. It's replacing my John Deere 250 skid steer, which was a wheeled skid steer. You see, I've upgraded to tracks. Tracks are definitely an upgrade, especially for a farm. Now, if you've got a project or if you're working on a project where you'll be on pavement a lot, I suggest that you take a look at a tire machine. If you're working dirt a lot, if you're working in steep environments, muddy environments and stuff like that, I suggest that you look into a track machine. Even if you're thinking about getting into muddy and rough environments, think about a track machine. So the John Deere 250 skid steer that I have, it had grouser tracks on it. Without grouser tracks in the mud, in the snow, in the winter time, it was absolutely useless on the farm, in the mud. On pavement, it might not be useless. It might be good for pushing snow and stuff like that and or doing concrete jobs and city type work. So the reason we upgraded to tracks is because it's a lot easier on the land. It has much less of a footprint and it won't get stuck in a mud hole that's this deep, which is definitely a plus. So a few things that we need to talk about on this skid steer, you need to think about horsepower and hours. So if you're looking at a skid steer that has about 40 horsepower, a smaller skid steer, and it has 2000 hours, you might be a little bit wary. In other words, the higher the horsepower, the less the hours matter, okay? So a 40 horsepower skid steer is gonna get the snot worked out of it with 2000 hours where 100 horsepower or 80 horsepower, 70 horsepower skid steer isn't gonna have that much wear and tear. And we lucked up on this one. It only has 280 hours. I got a smoking deal on it. I really appreciate it. Cody, the guy I bought it from, thank you so much for the deal. We're gonna walk around this machine and we're gonna talk about the things to look for. You wanna put your bucket on the ground. You wanna make sure your, your loader is lifted up with that bucket shut it down and let it settle and see if it does settle down, okay? You wanna raise that bucket up and you wanna watch. You wanna see if it's gonna settle down. You might have a hydraulic pump issue. You may have a leak, you may have a problem. You wanna walk around the entire machine and you're looking for leaks. You're looking for leaks in hydraulic cylinders. You're looking for leaks underneath the machine. If you can tilt the cab back on the machine, normally it's just two bolts. You unbolt them and you rock that cab back. If you can tilt that back and look up under that machine, look in the belly of it, see if it's full of trash, if it's full of hydraulic fluid, and inspect all of your hoses and lines and see if they are cracked. The 2000 model John Deere skid steer, the 250, it had, horrible, horrible cracking hoses, but you couldn't see them on the outside. You could only see evidently they were degrading on the inside. So beware a machine that's older that has lower hours because it's not getting used enough and these machines need to move. They need to be used and they need that hydraulic fluid circulating through there. So if you're picking up something that's like a 1995 or a 2000 or even like a 2005 model, you want to make sure it's got a few hours on it, you know, 1400, 2000 hours, something like that. Again, this is a 74, 75 horsepower machine and the John Deere was a 64 horsepower machine. Now we're going to walk around this and take a look at a few different things that are good food for thought for you guys when you're looking at buying a good use skid steer. 
So I think the easiest and best way to do this is to start at the front of the machine and we'll work our way back all the way to the rear. We'll open it up, we'll take a look under the hood and everything you need to see. So we'll start right here. We're gonna go ahead and we'll take a look inside the cab right here. So inside the cab, the operator station right here, you've got a pretty high quality seat, a little tear in that seat, not a big deal. Expect wear and tear. These machines are, are climbed in and out of all the time and they're put through a lot of abuse. Cup holder looks pretty good. Not a lot of grease and oil or anything like that in here. Got a little bit of debris. That's pretty normal. If you're buying a machine like this from somebody and they don't have enough common decency to clean the machine up, then you know to be wary. Buyer beware in that case, okay? Because if they're not cleaning the machine up to sell it to you, they're probably too lazy to have serviced it properly and they're probably getting rid of a problem piece of equipment, okay? Now you can see this one, if you wanna tilt the cab back, all you got to do is undo those two bolts and the cab will rock back. We're not going to rock the cab back for today's video. You want to check your lights. You want to make sure both your front and rear work lights are working properly. You want to make sure that your hydraulic couplers are in good shape right here, that they don't drip, that they're not leaking. They might have a little bit of debris on them, but you just want to make sure that they're clean and nice and everything looks neat and there are no leaks and dribbles and drips all over the machine right here. You want to inspect your cylinders right here. You want to start at the top and you need to make sure everything's probably been well lubricated. You can see grease, you can see oil. It's not dry. Now, if you're out in the desert country of Arizona or something like that and you don't see grease on this machine and you raise up this critter, you shake this from side to side, okay? So grab these pallet forks right here. You want to shake it. You'll hear it go flop, 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 flop. You'll hear it shake. These are shims. There's a shim there and a shim there. When they get loose, that means they're starting to wear and you may have to replace those shims. Now, we wanna inspect our cylinders down here. Make sure that we don't have any hydraulic leaks on both this cylinder and that cylinder. I wanna look at our hoses. All of our hoses look absolutely awesome. This machine is a very low hour machine. But again, buyer beware. When looking at a low hour machine, be sure you call in the VIN number. So. When I bought the John Deere 250, it was a 220 hour machine, but it didn't look like it. So it didn't look like it. I called John Deere and I found out that the computer had been replaced. The dashboard had been replaced in that machine and it actually had around 14, well, 13 to 1400 hours, something like that. Now I wanna go back here to our rear lift cylinders and we wanna make sure a little bit of oil and dust right here is fairly normal, okay? That's fairly normal, it's all right. Uh, if it were leaking and dripping, you'd see it down here, you'd see it on the tracks, and you'd see it down here on the front face of the cylinder, okay? This is also a bushing that will wear out, all right? Make sure it's well lubricated. You can see the lubrication point is right down here and it's got grease dripping off of it, all right? This is the hydraulic cylinder right here that helps hold the cab up. If we were opening the cab, we would inspect that. We want to inspect our hydraulic lines and make sure they haven't taken a real beating. And I can tell by looking at this machine that it was told to me it was a farm machine, but it was a rental machine. Right here is a sticker where the rental uh, company had on it. And you can see evidence like do not use starting fluid on engine. So this was a rental machine really low hour rental machine. Now, before we get into the tracks, we're gonna inspect the whole outside of this machine. You can see we've got a little bit of wear here, but no major dents, no major dings, just a little bit of scuff and rub and wear, probably completely normal. Now, it isn't completely normal to have a beat up cage back here that protects the back of your machine and your radiator up in there, okay? Also, we've got several compartments right here. This is where your hydraulic fluid goes in, and this is where your battery goes in. So has this machine been stored in a shelter all the time, all of its life? Odds are, probably not, okay? We'll get in here, we'll take a look at the battery. Probably the original battery, you wanna look in here and see if you can find the date code on the battery. And just a little bit of investigation, we'll find that for you. You can see we've already got a little bit of a leak, we've got a little bit of corrosion, but that's not a deal breaker on this machine, okay? This is lockable, so nobody can steal your battery. That's a plus right there, definite plus. This is lockable, so nobody can contaminate your hydraulic fluid. This is lockable, so nobody can get under the hood and steal anything or damage anything or put sugar in there or whatever. Um, 
I want to look at our tailpipe and we'll open up the hood here and take a look at that. Okay, these things leap up like frogs in a dynamite pond. They do awesome. You look at this, inspect it. This grate is not beat up. It hasn't had stuff dropped on it and beat all to pieces. One indicator of wear and storage outside is a rusty tailpipe. So you're gonna find that a lot of these older machines have rusty tailpipes. That is not a deal breaker on a machine with two, three or 4,000 hours. And it's something that's easily replaceable. This machine does not have the def fluid, but it does have the regen, okay? So this regens, and when you start it up, it smells a little bit like ammonia, all right? We're gonna open this guy up, and you've got a little handle right here. Everything, listen, everything functions so smoothly. Look at that, okay? That's what you want. You don't want things that are flopping around. You want things to be tight. They need to be right and tight. Open this door right here inspect all of our lights look good everything looks good this is our backup beeper i'm probably going to unplug that because it is annoying uh, you can pop open your air filter right here and this tells you everything you need to know about your air filter pop that open take a look in there see how dirty it is go in here and you can see your oil filler cap and this thing is a little bit warmer i pulled it out of the garage um, we've got an oil filler cap here we've got an oil filler cap here this has a Yanmar diesel engine in it, okay? We're gonna pop this open. We wanna take a look for grime and grit and nasty inside that oil cap. And that looks pretty darn clean. We're probably due for service. And anytime I buy a new piece of equipment like this, I'm gonna service it probably within the first three, four hours that I have it or that I use it. Um, you also wanna go in here and you wanna pull out your dipstick, your oil dipstick. This has a locking oil dipstick, very handy. Pull that dude out, inspect it. Now it's a diesel machine, so expect it to be a little bit dirty, it's okay. Uh, you wanna inspect it and make sure that you don't have any type of froth or foam on there. And some people will actually taste it to see if it has any antifreeze in it. Now, check this guy out right here. Don't open it if it's hot, but if it's cold, go ahead and pop it open and take a look inside there. This has the purple antifreeze in it and it looks clean as a whistle. Most machines aren't gonna have a gigantic aluminum radiator like this. This thing is absolutely awesome. Uh, look at your filters right here, make sure everything's good. If you can obtain service records, please obtain those service records because they make all the difference in the world in buying a used machine. If you've got a machine that has 4,000 hours and you have service records from the time it was purchased new, then you've got something that's something to be proud of for sure. So as we're under the hood and we're inspecting, we want to get down in here. We want to make sure that we're just not greasy and dirty. These things are famous for busting hoses and getting oil and grease and grime all over everything. You want to reach down in here. You want to check your belts out and make sure they're good. I do know for a fact that this machine needs the alternator belt tightened up on it. When I start it up, sometimes it goes squeak. So it's something that I know. Make sure that your fuse panels, and the fuse panels are located right here. When you open them up, be sure and inspect the fuse box and make sure it's not contaminated. See how clean that is? And see how nice that looks? That's what you want, okay? If you get a fuse box that looks like uh, <laughs> a bunch of mice has lived in there, then you probably wanna reconsider buying that machine. You wanna look down in here for oil, for signs of leaks, and you wanna get up under the machine and inspect the bottom of it. And you wanna inspect and see if you have any drips. You don't want to buy a machine that's wet. I actually recommend buying or bringing a piece of cardboard with you when you get ready to inspect a skid loader and just slide it up underneath there as you're walking around checking it out okay you can see right here is a spot to hook up chains very cool pull this little tab shut this guy okay tight as a tick very very nice all of our rear lights work everything works the backup beeper works you want to make sure that nobody monkeyed with this thing okay Next, we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk about your tracks, but you're also inspecting both cylinders right here. And you see, we've got a little bit of wear on this cylinder right here. So we've had a little bit of a leak. That is a little abnormal, okay? So at some point, this cylinder may need to be rebuilt and I can see that it's a little bit wet right there. That 
is a negotiating point right there. Now, will this go bad within the next two years? I don't know, it depends on how much you're gonna use it. If you're gonna be putting a thousand hours a year on this machine, then expect to have to pull that and rebuild that cylinder. And you can send them off and have them rebuilt or you can rebuild them yourself. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that will teach you how to rebuild a cylinder. So we're to the track portion of this, and this is the C-type track. You can see it's shaped like a C right there. We've got a little bit of wear on here, especially for a machine that only has about 230 hours. Again, it was a rental machine, so you gotta kinda beware a rental machine that has this few of hours, and we've got some cuts and gouges on here. We'll probably end up having to replace these tracks yeah, sometime within the next two years or so. I'll probably put about 100 to 200 hours on this machine uh, every year here on the Stony Ridge farm. So I'm not really concerned with those tracks. They've got plenty of tread left on them and they're in pretty decent shape uh, aside from a few gouges and stuff. I wanna look underneath here. I wanna see if we have a lot of mud caked up underneath. And when I bought this machine, it did have a lot of mud caked up under there. So again, if the person you're buying the machine from isn't gonna wash it before they show it to you, then you wanna question that. You wanna make sure that that person has maintained it well. Happened to be the person I bought it from was a good friend. I told him, don't wash it, don't worry about it. All right, so we wanna look at the drive sprocket right here, and this is our drive sprocket. So this probably has about 20% wear, so it's about 80%. So it's pretty good to go right there. I wanna look at these, I wanna make sure that these teeth aren't razor sharp. They're pretty sharp, but they're not razor sharp. And as this belt system right here, or this track wears, these will get sharper. So be very, very careful when you reach up underneath here, okay? They start out, obviously, with rubber on them, and then they wear out, okay? You can also see right here, this is where the tracks have ridden on these wheels. And I'll show you these wheels right here. So you've got wheels right here, and you can see this one has a little bit of a misshape in it, a little bit of a dent. There are several little wheels right here that guide the track system right there, okay? And I think those have a sealed bearing inside of them. Uh, you wanna look again, and you can see we're cracked a little bit in here. We are cracked just a little bit right in there. You probably can't even see that on the camera. I wanna look back in here and wanna see how worn uh, the, where the teeth meet the track, how worn that is. And this looks pretty good. Again, like I said, this track system looks very, very nice. If you're looking at these and they are as sharp as a pinpoint or a razor, you're gonna need to replace this entire drive sprocket. So that's gonna be an added expense, okay? And this is hydraulically driven on this machine. This machine has a pretty cool setup. It auto tensions the tracks. Some machines, you will pop off a little cover and you'll pump grease in there and you'll tension your track. But that's something that you look for. Now, if you had a wheeled machine or a tire type machine, you're just looking for wore out tires and you're looking for any sort of leaks and or pops and cracks that you might hear as you're driving because it's driven by a chain mechanism in most cases. Another thing you want to look at, the mechanism that you use to release and attach attachments, okay? Is that an automated hydraulic mechanism or is it like this? where it's done by hand. You wanna make sure the automated one is doing really well. And this is one of those things that needs a lot of lubrication. You can look down in here and see where they're lubricated. This is something that's often missed. Again, you wanna give her a little bit of a shake and you wanna actually get up in that machine and you want to jiggle this back and forth. If it's got a bucket on it or whatever it'll come with, you wanna jiggle it back and forth to make sure that you don't have any play right in here, okay? Cool. Let's go get in the operator station. We'll turn the key on and listen to it run. All right, guys, we'll climb over in this machine. You wanna make sure that the machine suits you. The comfortability of the machine suits you. Is it too tight in the cab for you? Is it too loose in the cab for you? Do you have a suspension seat? I will tell you, a suspension seat is a deal breaker for me after riding in that John Deere 250 skid steer. It was like riding on a cinder block as I worked. So this is super nice and plush. Go ahead and turn your key on and you'll hear things start to work. You should hear the fuel pump. When I bought my John Deere skid steer, the 250, the fuel pump was bad and I didn't know it. So this is a good point to listen for. Turn the key on. Let it do its little cycle, what it's gotta go through, and I can hear. 
tick, 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 tick. That's the fuel pump. Go ahead and start the machine up. And when you get to the place where you're buying the machine, ask the person not to start it, especially if it's cold outside, because you want to know how this machine starts when it's cold. So we'll go ahead and hit it. Very, very nice, very nice. So this machine has the joystick controls. This controls the bucket, this controls forward and reverse, and this is a two-speed machine. So when you go test drive it, you wanna make sure that you try both speeds. You wanna go high speed and low speed. This machine has only low flow hydraulics. Some machines that are this size or even a little bit bigger, like the 85, 90 horsepower machines, are gonna have two hydraulic hookups. In other words, they're gonna have a high flow and a low flow hydraulic hookup. You wanna test those. You wanna make sure that they're working properly. So if the person you're buying it from has a grapple attachment or something like that, that is an ideal thing to have on the loader to try everything out. A uh, grapple or a mower or something like that. Um, the throttle on this is really simple. It's just right here. All the light controls are right here. You get some pluses, you get some minuses. You got a little bitty cup holder that's about as big as a Coke can <laughs> right here. I don't know, that's not good for anything. I can't even uh, stick a water bottle in it. So <laughs> I've got a shelf back here, which is really, really handy to have. Um, drive the machine around. Does it feel tight? Does it feel loose? When you let go of the stick, does it cruise to a stop or does it throw you out of the front of the machine? Make sure your seat belt and all your safety mechanisms are working right here. So the John Deere just had a seat belt. This has these flaps. The Bobcat type will have a, uh, a bar that comes down and holds you in, kind of like a roller coaster, okay? If you're looking at a cab model, you wanna make sure that the cab isn't absolutely disgusting inside. And most of the cabs on these machines, when you buy them, are absolutely disgusting if you're buying a cab machine. And a lot of times when you're buying a cab machine, if you're not buying it from a company, uh, like a rock quarry or something like that, it's probably a machine that's just about worn out and it's giving the previous owner some problems. Unless you can see like this situation where I bought an upgraded and I got rid of the other loader. So the fellow that I bought mine from, it was his second machine and what he did, he bought it and he flipped it. That's all he did. He bought it, replaced a hose and he flipped it. And uh, I ended up replacing a lot of hoses on it. So beware, buyer beware on an older machine. A um, lot of bells and whistles in here. No, not a lot of bells and whistles, but you do wanna make sure your suspension seat is good and make sure that everything goes forward and back appropriately. So we can go back. We can go forward, everything feels good. Drive it around and make sure it's comfortable for you. That's the main thing. Make sure that you're comfortable getting in and out of this machine because you're gonna get in and out of it a lot throughout the day as you use it. Cool? Very, very nice. Now, another few pointers to give you uh, on the running capabilities of your skid loader that you're thinking about buying. Did I feed you with a fire hose? Did you get a ton of information? A little bit more info, okay? So when you fire this machine up, don't be scared. Let it warm up to normal operating temperature and then hit that dude at full throttle. Don't be scared of it. If the seller starts getting a little wary of you doing that, drive it around. Drive it for an hour if you have to. I mean, you're making a big purchase. You're, you're spending anywhere from 15 to 50 or $60,000. So you really have to think about this. This is a major, major expense for you. So you've got to think about every little thing that you're gonna do. Raise the bucket all the way up, peg it to the top, okay? Once you peg it to the top, hit the, ex the uh, auxiliary hydraulics and see if that pump is going bad, okay? You wanna stress this machine. You wanna raise the machine up. So on these pallet forks, you wanna put those pallet forks down and tip the whole machine up and watch it and see if it starts to settle and sink down. If it does, then you might have a hydraulic pump problem. You may have leaky hoses, but for some reason, it's not quite as tight as it should be. So just good food for thought. You wanna go in, you wanna turn left, you wanna turn right. If you got the opportunity to pick something up, pick it up. If you got a load of gravel, like what we see over here, pick some gravel up, dump some gravel, play with it. If the guy that you're buying it from seems wary of you running the snot out of this machine, then it may have a problem. So red flags, the biggest red flags that you're gonna find on a used skid loader like this are going to be leaks and or looseness from poor maintenance. So the red flags are dirty, dirty, dirty machines, wet and greasy, nasty machines. Um, and inside the cab, it, 
be sure if you're looking at a cab machine that your heat and your air conditioner works because if you're running this thing out in the hot summer months and the air condition doesn't work, it is going to be like a sauna in there and you're not going to want to run your machine. So you got to make sure everything is working properly and if it's not working properly, you need to understand what it costs to repair those parts. Now you want to consider what the wear items are and what they might cost. So if you've got a worn out main drive sprocket, you want to go on your phone real quick and research what that cost. If your tracks are slightly worn or very, very worn, you want to go online, you want to research. So each one of these tracks cost about 1600 bucks versus it cost me about 750 bucks to put a whole new set of tires on the John Deere 250 tired loader. But I will say that a track loader versus a wheeled loader is night and day. <laughs> Especially if you're working in the dirt, I recommend getting yourself a nice track loader. So guys, if you have any pointers, I am not the know-all end-all of skid steers. These are just awesome pointers that I've learned over the years after owning a couple of these machines and running several different machines. If there's any food for thought that you might have, please post it down there in the comments section. If I've said anything wrong, I know you'll tell me, so post that down there too. Guys, pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel, come on back to the Stony Ridge Farm, and we'll learn a little bit more about something else next time. All right? Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys in the next video on the Stony Ridge. All right? Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. In my position here. I don't like my right there. Ooh, these need some sunglasses. Hmm, do I have sunglasses up here? I need some sunglasses. All right, we got shades. 80. I have successfully urinated and am now prepared for the video. The other little skid steer. Oh man. I know you're laughing, dude.